We are learning um, Shardal and Parakyud Aleph, and um, I, wa I want to go into the um, what he actually says, but in a, I think there's a lot of Omek here that um, we haven't possibly considered in all of our previous learning, although we've talked about it for the last week. And where I want to get to is what is really the essence of Ratzo. What we said until now, what we were learning is the idea of Yisrael Vairais of Akuchabrihu Chadhu, which is the way the song goes, but I just want to point out it's not the way the Zohar goes. The Zohar goes, Kuchabrihu Vairais of Yisrael Kulay Chadhu. If you look in your nefesh achayim, so it's a, it's not Yisrael v'yoraisa. The the way it should go is kud shabrichu v'yoraisa v'yisrael chadhu. That's the way it should go, because that's lush in the zayar as the nefesh achayim brings. It's a zayar parshas achrei amud ayin gimel. The difference is that, um, and the reason I mention this is not just so we should know how to sing, but the reason I mention this is because what we're talking about is a three linked chain, if you will which becomes one chain and starts with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, works down to Torah, and then goes down to Yisrael. So we are, in that sense, Chadhu with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's all one thing in the Yishtel Shlus HaDvarim. And um, what we spoke about, which is extremely important, is that where is that Chibor? And this is what I'd like to ex expand upon. Where is that Chibor? between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Yisrael. It is the Torah, sort of like, if you look at it, it's actually the Torah, which is Mechaber, the two things. And and the Torah is another way of saying Ratzon Hashem. Now, please follow me carefully here. So the truth is, where were Mechaber Yisrael? The Kuchabrichu is by Raisa, which is the same Ratzon. So, um, so let's look at the Nefesh Chaim inside a little bit in paragraph 2, and then we'll, I want to expand upon it. L'chein Amru B'vreshis Rabbah Perak Aleph. It says in the beginning of the Medrash Rabbah, this is Parshish B'vreshis by the Bria Soilam, Shemach Shavton Shel Yisrael Kodma L'chol Dover. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Machshava about creating the Jewish people a chosen people simply could but I, I believe at this point it could have been any people but those who would chose to be chosen as did Avraham Avinu as we did at Harsinai so Kadosh Baruch had in mind a chosen people there's a stira to what the Torah says that the Torah came before everything so if the Rashi's Machshava is Klai Yisrael so how is the Rashi's Machshava Torah that's his Kasha and the tarots, ki akol echad b'sharshan, because it really all comes, it's all the same thing in the sharish. V'hihi, das idas, hihi. V'zesha amar machshavtan shal Yisrael, when we talk about my original thought, Hashem's talking, my original thought is Yisrael. My shamru Yisrael ala b'machshava t'chila. Now, Let's be careful with the words. Yisrael Allah b'machshava t'chila. Who's machshava? Hashem's machshava. Hashem has a machshava. So the first thing Hashem thought about, let's say, in, in, in terms that we can understand, is Kla Yisrael. Reutzel what does that mean? Think about the word bracious. The very beginning. Like it's it's a great title for a book, the very beginning. In fact, I named the book Beginnings. Um, Bracious means, you know, you think what's the beginning, um, but go to the beginning of the beginning, and then go to the beginning of that, and then you have Racious. Atahu Rishon, Rotzelimer Racious Hamachshava, and here we're getting technical, which is, I believe, possibly one of the most um, esoteric, on the one hand, are the most practical things we could ever learn. That there is a machshava. Think about a body called machshava. We all have it. And then think about one little corner in the right, the first germ 
<laughs> of that machshava is called reishis ha-machshava, like the seed of the machshava. Soid, and that seed of the machshava, we're talking about Hashem's machshava, haruusa ha'ilah. This is the soid, this is the secret, which we're learning today, of the high Ratzon. Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha. Ratzon Hashem. I want to ask you for a moment to forget about your Hebrew. We all know what Ratzon means. Um, we all say Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha, and I don't know how much we think about it. What does that mean even? Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha. May it be your will. But here's something new. The Soid Reusa, Reusa is Aramaic for Ratzon, Soid Reusa Ilah, the secret of the high Ratzon, Kamoshikasa Bezayar Vayera Kuf Yud Ches Amad Beis, the Ha Yisrael Solik Bereusa the Kuchabricho Adlai Livra Ba'olam, that Yisrael, or those that chose to be chosen, are, were the, were the uh, original the rashes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Machshava, meaning, the, and, and which is the Ratzon. Let me, let me just say that again, my words. In other words, we have our Machshavos, Rabbis Machshavos Blavish. Let's take ourselves as an example, if you will. Rabbis Machshavos Blavish. There's many, many Machshavos. But for a moment, and this is like, uh, you know, serious technology and serious Musr at the same time. Uh, we we have to stop and think. Uh, all right, we could say this is what we're thinking, but then we have to ask ourselves, like, why are we thinking that? What is the racist hamachshava? Where did that machshava come from? And the answer, like, where, where like, where did it come from? So you can say, well, it popped into my head. You can say that um, I have a certain goal, and that's getting me to my goal. So comes the the um, the zayar here. And it tells us that you want to know what Ratzon is? Ratzon is the Reishis Hamachshava, the first seed, the first germ. What's the word I'm looking for? The very first part of the world of Machshava, even by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is Ratzon. What does it mean for us? It means that what we think we're thinking is not necessarily true as logical as it might be because it's only being influenced by our original Ratzon, which is where the Machshava started from. So, you know, like they say, like if you, if you, um, if, if you make a straight line or if you make two straight lines and it's off uh, a, a tenth of a millimeter at the beginning, um, eventually you'll end up thousands of miles apart. So, like, so you say, hey, how do we grow so far apart, you and I? So the, the answer is, well, we could try to fix it here, we could try to fix it here, but let's look at whether the original Ratzon was correct, because that's where all Machshava comes from. Move on. Next paragraph. Very, very... Yeah. Sorry, but just, just to ask on that, I think you, to understand it, that Ratzon is essentially how the world should be, how the, how the world is, and if, if if something's wrong, it's because we deviated from what that Rotson was. You're, you're way ahead of me, Yoni. Um, okay. We're talking about, let's say, our Rotson, Hashem's Rotson, making them compatible. That's where you're at. But we're saying something different that, like, analyze the word Rotson. And we're asking, may it be your will or may it be my will. Um, the Rotson is the, the departure point of, of, the, of the room called Machshava. And everything in that machshava, no matter how solid it is, no matter how, um, you know, uh, cerebral it is, no matter how MS it seems and how logical, logical it is, how scientific it is, but it's all going to be based on the original Ratzon because that's where machshava grows from, like my two lines. And, and you know, it's like, it's like the, uh, I'm sorry for mixing metaphors, but it's like the, you know, like the seed of a tree, like how that thing's going to look in five years, all blossomed, and what the fruit is going to look like. Amazingly, it depends on the seed, and that's true of our children, and that's true of... 
I believe so. Well, where the Nefesh HaChaim is going with all this is to what Lishma means, right? And, and, and I'm, I'm just going to um, uh, naughtily skip ahead that if, if, if Lishma is in the first seed of my Machshava, then all the fancy things of saying L'Shem Yichuds and, and it's not the point. That's what the Nefesh HaChaim is saying. He's not saying a deep thing. Like everyone looks at the Nefesh HaChaim as a big kula. Eh, you don't really have to learn L'Shema like, you know, like the, the Hasidim learned, let's say. No, he's, I'm not getting into Hasidim, but everybody, every Jew. Um, what we're talking about L'Shema, he's going to say, and I say this, uh, I'm, I'm taking a license to say, what he's going to say in a couple of Prakim ad is that, you know, we're not measuring what you do, what you don't do, what your machshav is. We're talking the lishma, when you think about the word even, is the why, the ratzen harishan, the drive. What's pushing me to do this to begin with? So somebody's learning taira, shalai lishma. Uh, you, know, you know, why am I doing this? So Rav Chaim Velazhin says, there are many lai lishmas along the way, but why am I doing this? Get to the, to, to the, to the ratzen harishan. Um, and, and the same thing is with everything that we do. I just gave you an interesting, I gave a mushal of a tree or even a child. But you, you see, if you look in the um, Kabbalistic text, which is even brought in the Mishnah Bura, like the, the machshava that we have at, during intimacy can change the entire um, child, if you will, and there has to be a machshava of Kedusha, but also the Ratzin, Mishnei Atzadim, has to be with Kedusha, Rusa Ilah. And when the Ratzin is with Kedusha, the Ratzin, meaning, you know, not that there's no Hana or no Taiva, those are all very helpful things, but, but the what's the real Ratzin here? And that's like a very, very sophisticated and deep things for, for our group here to think about. Like, you know, just, just stop to think for a minute um, as to why do we do what we do? Why did we say what we said? You know, why do we lead the but life? I, you're, you're, you're talking about two elements, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up just because I, I could benefit from clarification. You're talking about runs on the way we use the word in modern Hebrew, which means desire or intent but you're also using it in terms of like machine code like what's the essential code when you talk about the seed of a tree all that that tree will be forever at every moment is enwrapped in that in the dna you know and i've heard the dna metaphor before so so somewhere this idea of rut zone is the intermingling of both of those things is, is what i think i'm hearing okay I'm not. I don't. I'm not familiar enough with machine code, but but the fact is that um, we are driven by our original rut zone and everything that's going to happen in our life and everything that's going. A kol pre amola seinu, a kol pre amelas Hashem, is all about that rut zone. So you ask this. Well, here, here's a, there's so many things to say about this, which we're going to say a little bit. But you know, why are the Jews eternal? Because rut is eternal. Nothing. Nothing can, nothing again. Ain davar oy made me pnei haratzah. When the original rotson of the first come from? That's 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 what we need to discuss, and that's probably the most important existential question that we could ever ask. <laughs> we're going to explain it. I mean, we're going to try to explain it. You know, is this true? Um, you guys know better than I do. Um, in, you know, in the scientific model, as I recall from high school, <laughs> um, in the scientific model, somebody has a theory and then tests the theory. In other words, <laughs> you start off thinking, well, maybe this medication is going to cure Corona. So um, you have this kind of a theory for uh, maybe that even is preceded by a hypothesis, you know, um, how does it go? There's four steps. I forgot already. What do you say, God? What are the four steps? Hy hypothesis, theory, proof. There's a step, step before that even. But, uh, you know, like pardes. But, 
But, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting thing to me that I don't even know if it's possible to sit in a laboratory and say, OK, what's going to work? <laughs> like, you know, you know, you need to be testing something. So 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 now that you're testing, unless you come across it by accident, like penicillin or something. So so what happens is it would seem to me like it's a very, very strong discipline in the scientific model not to be no gay ladover <laughs> to my my hypothesis and my theory. You know, I want to prove my theory. That's my thesis here. That's my Ph.D. I want to prove the theory or at least disprove a theory. But but I got to have a something. So here we're talking about your question is, is, is extremely important. Where does that first Rutzen supposed to come from? Uh, does it come from my gosh music? It comes from my ruchni. So let's take a look. Next paragraph, and then no, we'll go into it. Vaharuusa. What does Ruusa mean? Ratzon. He, Rashis Hakol. Ratzon is the beginning of everything. Elikus Gamor Kivyachol. Complete godliness in the Ratzon. Who's Ratzon here, Chaim? I believe either one, us or Hashem. As finite as we are, Ratzain comes from the world of infinity. The Zayar says this in Parshas Noach. It says in Parshas Bekudai, Amar Rav Shimon Aremis. Rib Shimon, that's not Rib Shimon Bar Yochai, that's Shimon from Ramot. <laughs> like Shmuel Anavi. Shimon from Ramot. Omar Rib Shimon Aremis, de Kadru Usa Ila, Vachol Inen Nahirin, Miraza de Machshava Ila, Lazata, Kulan Akron Ein Saif. That the Ratzin El Yoin and all of the Oirois which come from it. They're all called Ein Saif. Kulan Akrun Ein Saif. Here's a Zayar for all of us. Ayin Sham Hetev. We're not going to do that. Uba Agas Harav Chaim Vital. Zichrein Levracha Shama Uba Eitz Chaim Shari Gulam V'Yosher Reish Anof Beis Uba Shari Shtalshlus Hayut Sfiris Reish Anof Beis. The um the point is made. We're talking about Pikabola. So, 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 so when we're talking, when we say, when it says. Reusa ilah. Before it says, uh, hakol elokus gamor kariachal, and then it says reusa ilah. So we're talking about the our reusa. Hashem's rotsin. Reusa ilah means Hashem's rotsin. And before that, when we said hakol elokus gamor kariachal, we're all talking about Hashem's and not ours, or are we saying there is a connection or we're saying it's the same or we're saying it's we're the saying, same that's what he said in paragraph one of this chapter meaning not in the goof not in the emotions Hashem doesn't get angry and, and sad in the same way we do um, and not even in the psychology or the emotions but in the ratza so is that saying that in our neshama we have a ratzon which lines up with Hashem's ratzon or which comes from Hashem's ratzon, which is almost as if it's taking, I mean, then this is the Bechira question or this okay. question, 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 separate, question accepted. From Hashem. And then this, you know, with the expression, <laughs> right, right, Rav Jonathan, Rav Jonathan, take, take, take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> but, um, this is what we're talking about. Um, but let's go, let's go at, at my pace because I'm not as quick with you thinking Kol Um There's, there's the Ratzayn Ha'elyon, which is the seed of the Machshava with which HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world and he created Kla Yisrael and he's answering Akasha here. How could it be that the, the Torah came before the world was the Ratzayn Arishan? And how could it be that Yisrael came before the Ratzayn Arishan? So the answer is it's Kulay Chad. Yisrael, that takes care of Kuchabrichu ve'ayraisa. The Yisrael that is part of that Ratzon is also part of that Chad. So what we're talking about, the Zayar is telling us, let's not just, just, just let, the, let the text talk to you for a moment. 
what, what, we're, what we're learning here is that there is a thing called machshava, whether it's our machshava or Hashem's machshava, there's the driver, the, the seed, the energia of that, of that machshava, and that's called ratzon, which is in the Karen Zavis of the machshava of this room. So imagine the chart of a big square called machshava, and the little corner, corner of it. Now, I want to tell you something. The um, Shari Ora in Shar Tess, that's from Yosef Gitkilia, great Makubal. So the Shari Ora, he, he describes this phenomenon for us. Let's just talk about the Kabbalah for a little bit more, just to clarify things, make it easier. Um, the, the Kabbalah is that we all know, in this, in this Zoom based mentors, we all know that there are Esser spheras. What, what's the first sphera? Somebody volunteer? Kesser. 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 Or to put it in Chabadi language, Chachma Bina Vadas is the Kesser. After that, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoid, Yesoid, Malchus. Loshin and Arisa, Loid me pnei shezeh gavoya mizeh, ala shezeh koidem mizeh. The Loshin and Arisa and the Hakdama to the Yitzchayim is not the one is bigger or stronger or more important than the other. One is koidem lezeh. So everything starts in the Kesser and works to the place of Malchus. So this is what we say when we, this is what we mean when we say, Soif ma'ase b'machshava t'chila. It's a pasuk. We say in l'chadodi. Soif ma'ase b'machshava t'chila. Meaning, what ends off in malchus starts off in machshava. Gentlemen with me? Not. Um, what starts off in Machshava ends up in Malchus. Everything that's in Malchus, which is in the world of Asiya, starts off in the Kesser. So when we're talking about, says the Shariyoira, in terms of Sephirois, we're talking about the place where everything comes, Zekoidom is where everything comes from, which is the world of Machshava. And where everything in Machshava comes from, the highest part in the Kesser, is the Ruusa Ilah, which is Hashem's Ratzai. Yeah. So when didn't we say that the machshava is in the realm of Bria? No, machshava. Look, there's machshava, nefesh ruach neshama. So let's get to that for a minute. But just work with the with this chart for a second. You have ten spheros, seven spheros that we can sort of like, uh, you know, uh, think of. There's a higher place which we can't even have access to, which is the world of the Kesser. And the highest place in the Kesser is the world of Machashava. And the highest place in the world of Machshava is the Ratza. So there's your chart. Same thing with the person who's B'Tzel Malikim. There's our Lamaisa, what we do. And then there is, it goes all the way up to our Chesek Vertifaris, it goes all the way up to Machshava, Chachma, Chachma. So Chachma is in the Kesari law, and the ratios of Chachma is Ratzon. So, Rebbe, the, the, the Ratzon then is the, is the source from which all of reality is extracted, the first step of which is being is is machshava. So like in other words, machshava then becomes that first, you know, um, derivation from Hashem's Ratzav. It's that, you know, that first degradation, if you will, from the, the most pure Ratzav. It's that first extraction. You know, like Rebbe is using the metaphor of a seed. So it's all packed in there in the form of DNA, you know, that kind of source material. Exactly. 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 The, the, this is so important for us in our Avodah Hashem. This is not just like an esoteric Kabbalistic, <laughs> like because we we need to get in touch with our own Ratzon, which is a very difficult thing to do. So, 
somehow as Jews we're connected to that directly. We can be. Like we asked, like I was asking last week, the Rambam says you can you can beat a person into extracting their pure rotsum. Good. And so therefore there is something immutable about it. It's just that we pile all kinds of shtus on top of it. Okay. I, I um, yes, yes. Would it be trivializing it to, instead of seek to talk about it as a, an ultimate vision or ultimate purpose, or is that just too simple? It's way too simple because you're on the other end of the spectrum. Let, let, me, let me tell you something which is a muscle and a, and a guide in my life. Um, that I believe, you know, I, I've, I've been in the, um, I was, not now, but I was in the um, cure of Rechoikin business for many, many years. Um, successfully. Um, probably from the founders of the non-Chabad cure of, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in that sense of the word. So I was in it before Wolfson was in it. Now, in that, in that world, that world of Kirov, and this is a very important thing for me, um, and it's actually why I left the world of Kirov. But in that world, so it developed from sitting down with another Jew, even though he's not from, <laughs> and what do we have, a Kesher with somebody who's not from? I remember that in 19... 82, maybe it was, or yeah, 1982, 81, I went to the, um, one of the biggest Gevirim in the world um, at the time, not in the Judaism in the world, and I wanted, like, to ask for funding for my organization, and he was like, what are you doing, <laughs> like, you know, so I said, look, all these people, you know, went off the derech, and they're, they're, you know, when we're trying to bring them back. And his response was, their parents didn't bother to give them the chinuch that my, par that my parents gave me. And now I should pay for it? <laughs> that, this is a tzaddik. But the way he looked at it is like, like mapitom. People walked away from this. Their parents walked away from this. They, they, they don't want to spend the money. They don't want to build the schools. They don't want to build the yeshivas. And now I'm supposed to save them. So I said, yes, you're supposed to save them. And he gave me $20,000. So that was, that, was, that was the story. But um, what, what I'm trying to say here is that here's a world which started off with, if you just talk to a, another Jew, if he's really Jewish, um, and that's, that's a big question in the United States of America, um, but if he's really Jewish, and no techniques, no gimmicks, no um, brainwashing, nothing like that. You just talk to somebody, and you have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Somehow or another, something is sparked, and a tshuva process begins. Um, it, you know, I, I said in public, if you're in front of 3,000 people at the Agoda Convention, that Baruch Hashem, I'm surrounded by at that point it was hundreds of Ali Chuva. I, I can't I was never I never made one of them. It's such a stuss to say. What happens is that maybe just to sit down and talk about a person's or, original Rutzen, um all of a sudden things grow. What has developed over the years is all kinds of systems um and of proofs uh which are good. It's good to have proofs. We from people need those too of proofs, of different techniques as to how to convince people, um, different kinds of seminars where, you know, eat a lot of starch and sleep on the floor and <laughs> sleep deprivation and, you know, all, all kinds of things, which is all good. It's all fine. You know, it's a lot of limit out there, but um, codes, a lot of codes, um, things come and go. There's the soup du jour. But what, unfortunately, in my opinion, I don't think you're seeing that many more balichuva than you saw with some Chabadnik sitting down <laughs> with a guy and, and, and just re reaching out to him. Um, or what people did in the early days. Um, and, and that was just to, to deal with the essence of who are you? You're a Jew, I'm a Jew, let's talk. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, um, and this as I say, it's not just a muscle, but it's really like a, a, a guide to life in my opinion. Because the same thing is true with Chinuch all those outer layers that you lay externally on something is like trying to help the tree after it blossomed or after it grew. Maybe maybe you could do something, maybe it's good, 
but you're not getting to the essence of the of the DNA because that could be really um, not just remarkable but miraculous. We've seen it. We've seen it with, in front of our eyes. Just miraculous, and to some extent, I'm not criticizing anybody, but to some extent, it's been replaced by things in the in the nefesh and in the goof, and and not in you know. There's a big lotion that the cure of organizations use. I'm not knocking them, by the way. I'm I'm part of it, but you know of um, uh, godol halagima. Like there's nothing like a good shalant you know, to to get somebody. Uh, going it's all true it's all true and it's you know and, and Shabbos candles are romantic and, and uh, everything is true but it's not I think most of it's true but it's not touching the the um ruts in our region I want to tell you this story years ago in in my in my house in um in Mottersdorf in Romema actually where I lived when I first got married so I made a um a party I don't remember what it was but I had um, a number of very hush of people came to that to that uh, Shavu Brachas, I think it was. Um, one of them was Rav Yaakov Hillel, famous Mekubal. And the other is his brother-in-law, who's a Rabbi Amayim Smicha from um, Rav Avram Ochana, who was the head of Machon Lahaira, um at that time and gave me Smicha and Chesha Mishpa. But uh, a, a big Mekubal, probably a bigger Mekubal even than Rav Yaakov Hillel, just not as famous. And they're, they're, they're sitting around and they're talking and talking, and you know, and we we're talking about the fact that on my block at that time in Romema was completely not from, but people are coming to learn with me, and people are coming to talk. And I was uh, I was learning a brisk at, and, and a half day, and not much I've had no casualties in this at all. And it was a, a made a, an amazing phenomenon. And somebody somebody made the point, you know, Israelis, you know, so somebody somebody made a point that um, yeah, but some of these guys, you know, you can talk and talk, and you can uh, get show love, and you can reach out. And like nothing works, they're cold, like, uh, you know. So whether you're Makabalet or not, um, you know, is, is one question. But I, I want to tell you what Rav Yaakov Hillel said. Siman shlo amad avotav bahar sinai. And that to some degree shaped my uh, career. Uh, there, there, there is something of amdu avisenu al har sinai where we said Nasa Venishma, and we tapped into the Ratzin Ha'elyon, and that Ratzin Ha'elyon is forever alive, albeit buried. And, and that's that's like the key, I believe, to having hashpa on anybody, whether it's another Jew, um, maybe a non-Jew doesn't have that Ratzin Ha'elyon in the same way, whether it's on our children, or it's on ourselves. That's it's It's all about getting down to the Ratzin Harishin. And I believe that before we get into the Indian of Lashma, this is like vital for Jewish life. This is my um, opinion. It was vital for Jewish life. Um, Dan, I want to ask you to do me a favor. That, that is a very, uh, that is a very, uh, my, my personal reaction is that that is a very um, optimism inducing concept because on the one hand, the, the DNA metaphor um, could could induce in a person um, uh, a lot of yush because well if I didn't have that much shava during intimacy then I guess uh, um, my children are you know it's but that's not the beauty of what you're describing is that we can actually unlike in in uh, real DNA we Jews can actually pull apart our our essential ruchnius DNA and lemafreya rebuild. The system from the essence up, and frankly, that is very optimism-inducing. That's the, the maybe most exciting thing I've ever heard in Torah. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. I agree. I, it's, a, the, it's a it's a guiding it's a guiding, it's a guiding light that you can reverse engineer or go back into. But, but, I remember I just share with you something that the um, I once went to a hafgana when I was a bacher. Um, it was about Nituche uh, Mason, I believe. And in that Hafgana, um, Rav Shalom Shvadron, all of Shalom, spoke. Everybody heard of Rav Shalom Shvadron? And he spoke. And um, I don't remember what the Hafgana was exactly about. I just know that I went because those were the, that was a fun thing to do at the time. You know, uh, that's, um, that's what you do. You, you know, it was about Shabbos. Or it was, but at that time, like everybody in Yeshiva went to these Hafganas. So, um, Rav Shalom Shvadron got up to speak, 
and he said, um, you know, here we're an adult audience. I will tell you something before I tell you what Shalom Shadron said, just to you know, share you with my uh, <laughs> my advice. But if if you learn um, Hilchos Maris Nida, you know, a lot of people bring um, Nida cloths and put them in my mailbox or some other Rav's in their mailbox. So when you're trained in this, I was trained by the Badats, Eda Haredes. Um, I went there every day and that's where I was trained. So um, there's, there's um, you know, there's all kinds of Shilohs and all kinds of colors and you have to have a lot of experience and people think they have experience, they don't have experience or they're guessing, they don't guess, you know, this is brown, this is yellow. But anyways, there's, there's a certain color <laughs> which um, in the Badat, Eide Charedis, Rav Bronsdorf, for all of us, he called this the um, the Hafgana Moich. <laughs> you know how there's a, there's a, a Moich Dachuk, there's a Moich, uh, so uh, just a little shtickle in the halacha here. Um, and what, what's a Hafgana Moich? So he explained to us that if you'll take a, um, a piece of cloth, a piece of white cloth, you know, and you'll hold it tight in your hand, for an hour. Um, your hand's clean, but you hold it tight in your hand for an hour like this. And then you'll open your hand and you'll look at the moch. It will have a color on it. So that's the pigment of the skin somehow wearing off on that. So he says to me that uh, it comes after mincha, um, you know, women make a moch tachuk, they go out to the hafganas for an hour, <laughs> they come back, they check the moch, and they have a shiloh. <laughs> So he called that a hafgana <laughs> It's a hafgana So that was the the matzah. Okay, so now you know. Now you now you have an inner tip in halach. It's a hafgana um, which is which is fascinating. But um, Rav Shalom Shadron got up at one of these hafganas and he said the following. I just remember he was so poetic and so beautiful in his beautiful sing-song way, and he said, he said, that Klal Yisrael. Will sein gut, Kla Yisrael is gut. Aber sada partizen rishayim vas lazenish sein gut. That was his lashon. Understand this. Kla Yisrael is gut. Everyone knows that much Yiddish. <laughs> Kla Yisrael will sein gut. Kla Yisrael wants to be good. Kla Yisrael is good. But there are so many thousands of factors which are not letting us be good. Be they societal pressures, be they psychological pressures, but the inner rut zone is good. And here he is standing at a hafgana, a demonstration against. Demonstrations are against. They're not for anything. They're against. And while being against, he has to understand what we're for. He explains to us what we're for. We're for the rutzen atoiv, the rutzen hanelam. The, 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 the mutzen that all kind of garbage was thrown over, and people are saying such dusim. And that's, that's the rut zone that, that, uh, that, that we're all having to see over here. So what are we being, his perspective was, Rav Shalom Shadra. What was he, what are we being mafkin against? What are we demonstrating against? All the garbage that's being thrown on the rutzen of a yid to be a yid. And not letting the ruts and blossom and the seed blossom into a tree. Same, same you said. I, I have to ask forgiveness, but um, I don't, I don't have a watch. I watch broke this way. I was just about to tell you, Rabbi, it's five till the hour. Um, so five minutes till 10. So um, five to 10. So we need to close up. What I'd like to do, and maybe I'll email to you, but I just want to share my screen for a moment and show you where we're going with this, if I can. Can you see that? Yes, it's clear. You see the Grand Mishnah? Where, where do you see there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm not good at this, so tell me. But the, the, here, here's the going. Let's just get a start on this because this is the Yisoid of Yisoidus. Um, the Pasuk says in Mishlei, Pasuk Beis, Kol Darche Ish Zach Be'enav, Vesoichen Ruchais Hashem. 
in a means. Pasuk, this is Shlomo Amal talking. Call Darchish, whatever you end up doing, whatever you decide to do, whatever path you take in life. So call Darchish, Zach a person will see it as a pure thing. My motives are pure, my actions are pure, everything is pure. Hashem. But who knows what's really driving the things that we do? Only Hashem. Now, let's just learn a sentence in the, in the gra underneath Bays. Kol Darke Haish, and there's a lot to say about this, but I just want you to look at this. Kol Darke Haish Zach Beinav. Kol Darke Haadam. This is the one sentence that I want to learn. Everything we do, Nim Shachim Achar Haratzain Harishain. Ukmaisha Oila Aruchai Baratzain Harishain. We're talking about people now. Everything that a person does, kol darche ha'adam, everything that you do, it means every decision that you make. We're all in a position of having to make decisions every minute, large and small. But every decision we make is really being driven, says the Gra, by the Ratzon Harishon. So we think everything we're doing makes so much sense, but yes, it does make sense. But it's all based in that Ratzon Harishan, which, remember, Kabbalistically, is a tiny ray of light in the top of the box called Machshava, which is the top of Chachma, which is the top of the Esther Spheres. So if Masa... Yeah. Isn't that also the parish of Zach, like Shem and Zayt Zach is the first rat? Yeah. That's what he's explaining. Kol Darchi Zach Beinav. He thinks it's Zach. But Zach meaning Zach is the rat, so not Zach meaning it's clean, like pure. Oh, I don't know. Why do, why do, how does an olive have rat, sir? But I'm saying the word Zach could be, could be two things. It could be the initial drop, and it could be pure, and it could be both. It could be. But, what, but, but don't forget, we're talking subjectively, meaning a person considers everything they do Zach. So on this, the Gras says, Kol Darche Adam, understand, that every decision any of us make here today or yesterday, where it's really coming from that decision, as logical as it might be and as holy as it might be, really all it is, is a blossoming of the Ratzon Harishin. Harishin. Whatever we decided in our Ruach, we need to get the Ratzon Ba Min Haruach. Kemoy Shapirashti. Ratzain is in the place of Ruach Yoni, if you're still there. Think about what this um, means, because you talked about the world yes. of Bria. So that's why I want to I want to be Myrich in this, but I, I also want to um, I just want to say this that <laughs> you know, um, if you're sensitive to Ratzam, let me just uh, sum it up with this, you know. If you're, so, if you're sensitive to Ratzon, and I, like we can't emphasize this enough because, I mean, really what we're all doing here is Avodah Hashem. And Avodah Hashem whether, is not really, is about getting in touch with our real, with our real Ratzon, Ratzon Arishan, and seeing if it's kosher or not. That's what the Cheshman HaNefesh, very, very difficult Cheshman HaNefesh, because even if we're very religious um, and halachic, we may be driven by uh, some false thing at the beginning, and that's very, very um, hard to look at, and it's also very scary to look at. It's, it's very, it's very, very, oh, it's very frightening to look at. So, but what we need to the cheshman on nefesh is what he's saying is like we need to examine the rutzon harishon, because only by examining the rutzon harishon will all the rest make any sense, and it won't be cognitive dissonance. It won't be just your your mind playing along and going through the entire Esther Spheroes based on a rut side, which is which is the Chatzila mistaken. <laughs> no 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 kesher to the Ratzon Hashem. So to to get back to where we started, Yisrael of Arayis of Kudshabrichu, that we are inspired people and we will do the right thing. And Klal Yisrael is good. And Klal Yisrael is good, but we need to be in touch. With A, what is our ruts and region? What is our children's ruts and region? We need to develop that more so than all the superficiality that comes afterwards. And we have to see, check it. That's where the badika has to take place and say, is your ruts and region really your ruts and region? 
because there is a Ratzon Rishon which doesn't go away, a Ner Tamid which doesn't get extinguished, which is deeper inside the person, as the Tanya says in Paragimel. There is a deeper part of a Ratzon which is still there, and you can't cover it up. No matter what you do, you can't cover it up. And that's the Ratzon that has to be growing, not the Sitra Achra. Okay, we'll leave it at this. There's a lot to, um, to, to say here, but we'll leave it at this. Yes, I'll, uh, have a good Nair of Shabbos. Thank you very much. Okay. Very much. Thanks, Rabbi. Thanks, Mike. Koya, thank you so very much. You know, Rabbi Yaakov, there, you remember there was a famous study um, that the, the Goyim did about people who had intimacy during the Vietnam War. And um, then they studied the children that came out, they all had the pious towards Mil Hamas. War. Oh, yeah? Did you ever hear of that study? Nope. <laughs> yeah, that was a very, very famous study done by the scientists that the people, the couples that had intimacy and violence were towards um, whatever. That was There's a, a lot to talk very about very the, the study. a lot to talk about the, what's going on in the United States now. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> um, but I will not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, Rabbi. <laughs>